Good afternoon. I'd like you to pretend with me for a second that it's a beautiful, sunny day outside, and you are watching a bunch of kids play football. They're throwing the ball around. They're laughing. Everybody's happy. That's what happens. It happens to be at a school. All of a sudden, you notice that Jimmy fell down. Oh, he must have tripped or something. Then there's a lot of people running to him, and Jimmy isn't getting up. Then you see the nurse come out, and she starts CPR, and EMS is called, and Jimmy gets transported to the hospital. This is where I meet Jimmy. Jimmy isn't moving now. Jimmy is hooked up to a ventilator that's breathing for him. There are lines and tubes coming out of all sorts of places in his body, and Jimmy is surrounded by friends and family who are shocked and frightened. Why do I meet them? I meet them because I am a pediatric electrophysiologist, otherwise known as a glorified heart electrician. Jimmy and his family want to know what happened. Why did it happen? And how can we prevent it from ever happening again? Unfortunately, I have to tell the family that's not the first question to ask. The first question we have to ask is: Is Jimmy going to wake up? What am I here to talk about today? I am here to talk about sudden cardiac arrest, which many times leads to sudden. Cardiac death. This is caused by three specific conditions. First of all, structural heart disease, where the heart isn't formed correctly, or the arteries that are supposed to pump blood to the heart don't work. The second is electrical, where the heart's rhythm gets out of kilter and it doesn't beat properly. The third is situational. Where you can get hit in the chest in exactly the right way, or you develop the common cold, and it goes to your heart and infects your heart. The reality is, it doesn't matter which of the three ways you suffer a sudden cardiac arrest; they all come to one common pathway. It's called ventricular fibrillation. The good news is, I have a treatment for that. It's called an automatic external defibrillator, or an AED. It is the reset button for the heart. Now, most people think when they see someone getting shocked on TV that that's starting the heart. That actually isn't the case. The heart never stops. What happens is the heart is a pump, and in order to be an effective pump. It needs to work together to pump the blood from the brain to the brain and the rest of the body. When the heart goes into ventricular fibrillation, each individual cell starts to beat on its own, and so it looks like a bag of worms, is no longer an effective pump, and so blood does not go to the brain and the rest of the body. The AED is your reset button. It tells everybody to stop. So that it can start again as one. There's only one thing you have to remember: you have to use it in three to five minutes. So let's think about that. How many of you, when you hear a fire alarm go off, actually leave the building? <laughs> Most of us sit there and think, "I'm sure it's a drill. I've got too much to do. I'm not moving." Right? Unfortunately, we learned in 9/11 that that is the response of most adults to fire alarms. What we further learned is once you realize that it's a real fire alarm, most of us have no idea where the emergency exit is, and we have no idea how to get out of the building. So, this is what schools have done. They have bought the AEDs. They agree that students. As well as faculty are at risk of sudden cardiac arrest. They bought the AED. They've put it in a nice box on the wall, and there it is. 
But that's not enough. Why? Remember, you have three to five minutes. Three to five minutes to get the AED, put it on, and reset that heart before damage is going to happen to the body and the brain. So what I do is I go into schools and I help run drills. Except in order to run a drill, everybody in the room first has to know, where is the AED? I asked you, if someone in the front row here fainted, how many of you know where the AED is in this building? That's the response I get in schools. The only people who know where the AED is, is the nurse and the coach. So if you faint in math class, nobody knows where it is. The other thing is the most common sport to need an AED is football. Football is not played indoors. It's on a field, somewhere remote from the school. Now, if a football player shows up and doesn't have his mouth guard, he's not going to play today, because that's dangerous. However, the entire team will play and practice, and the coach doesn't have an AED. But let's go back to our first question. Is Jimmy going to wake up? Let's say Jimmy faints in school, and there's a teacher standing next to him. The likelihood that Jimmy will go home from the hospital is less than 50%. Now, I don't mean go home, go back to school, be the same child he was before this started. I just mean go home. That may mean go home in a wheelchair. It may mean go home and not be able to talk to the rest of the world ever again. However, if there's an AED present and somebody uses it, the chance that Jimmy will go home goes up to 90%. Now, you might be surprised to know that I, as an official representative of Nationwide Children's Hospital, have met with the superintendents of six schools in the Columbus area, including Columbus City. And I have offered our help to run drills with AEDs and to train staff in the use of AEDs and CPR. And I have been told, no thank you. Our students are healthy. The AEDs are on the wall. Who needs another drill? So, let's talk about that fire drill. Every school in the country has fire drills. The last time a student in the United States died in a school fire was 1950. The last time a student suffered a sudden cardiac arrest in Columbus, Ohio, was 14 days ago, the fourth this year. AEDs aren't only for schools. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. AEDs can be found everywhere. They're actually on every other floor in this building. They are in malls. They are in airports. Every one of you can save a life. You just have to turn it on. So how do you use an AED? You turn it on. It's going to tell you what to do. It will lead you step by step of what is supposed to happen. It is then going to tell you, shock advised. Don't be frightened. Don't be scared. Because if it says shock advised, it analyzed the rhythm. And it is telling you, push the button because you're not going to hurt this person, you're going to save their life. Now, we as a community need to work together. We as a community who care for our young and our old, 
need to make sure that this headline becomes the norm and not the exception. Thank you.